Coming up on today's wrestling news, is this AEW star heading to WWE? We've got a current WWE champion facing a big injury blow. A top WWE star has been pulled from the active roster. And Shayna Baszler's Bloodsport opponent finally confirmed. I'm Anna Wilborn. I'm Michael Hamflit. And this is the news. Let's get straight into it then with the AEW star that could be heading to WWE was at WWE. In mm -hmm. fact, last night I'm talking of one Matt freaking Hardy. <laughs> yeah. Um, his AW contract is expected to expire at some point mm -hmm. this month. We've talked a lot about it. His brother Jeff is set to be in AW for a lot longer, a year, I think, due to the time added onto his contract. But uh, Matt's wife, Rebby, took to Instagram to post a video of them in the skybox at Rally North Carolina um, last night. Monday Night Raw was in. Rally North Carolina last night. Yeah. yeah, they were in attendance at the PNC Arena. Now, they live in Cameron, North Carolina, so they could just be attending the show. Mm -hmm. Watching Monday Night Raw is an absolute treat, of course. Indeed. Um, but there's been a lot of speculation about Matt's future, and uh, there was a reference to Matt actually on the commentary last mm -hmm. night. Michael Cole noting that there's only been three brother versus brother matches at WrestleMania. Uh, Matt versus Jeff. We're going to get Jimmy versus Jay. And I forget the other one. It wasn't very good, so... Um, Okay, it was, it was Brett, Brett versus Owen. Was we about Please don't hit me. Um, but yes, um, mixed emotions, uh, not just online, uh, but also in the What Culture Office regarding Matt returning to WWE. Yeah, perhaps more on that as this story develops, if indeed it does, I suppose. Um, a, what do we say, a divisive figure within AEW at this point? It's, right now, yes. Yeah, it's been a, a run of mixed fortunes, I would say, for Matt Hardy in AEW. Um, certainly, I think the nostalgia is still quite high for the Hardys mm -hmm. in WWE, based on the fact that um, the one thing that's remembered more than anything from the last run is when they came back. Yes. That WrestleMania 33 entrance, the stuff of legends, the stuff that only legends get, did it really. win your Did it win your poll? It absolutely did not. It did not make the final, which you can still vote on. Ooh. Steve Austin at WrestleMania 17 versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 25. Ooh. Two Texans in Texas. Where can people vote on that? Uh, at Michael Hamflit on X. Uh, time's running out though, so get your votes in now. It's pretty tight as well. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, but yeah, the rest of the Hardy run in WWE was, I would say, best described as nice. With yeah. Flirtations with the Broken Universe, so Vince McMahon via Michael Cole basically had open disdain towards all of that. Was uh, Jeff got his tooth kicked out at one point by like Seamus? Was in their feud with the yeah. bar. There was a run. That was a good. I enjoyed that feud. Yeah, that that was probably the best of their work. There was a run with Jeff Hardy and Seamus that like tiptoed into Jeff's problems with like alcohol and substance abuse. But yeah, had good uh, yeah. matches within there. Michael Cole did uh, get a load of this bollocks when they did. There's some broken stuff on there. Yeah, really hated it. So I, like I don't know. Like Matt Hardy, I suppose, has a place in WWE in the fact that any legend. Fits oh, yeah. you're talking about like all the times and the broken universe fits right in NXT, baby. Well, could that be where That'd this be awesome. makes sense? Like, is it what, what is this like usual sort of wrestler possibly available? Adam Will Bomb them for NXT News at 11. Yes, yeah, that's always that, like I say, it could just be Matt and Revy going, Do you want to go watch Raw? It's mm -hmm. good now, yeah. Um, it could be a ploy, it could be him saying to Tony. Yeah, pop along to the WWE show. Maybe you need to, to that. move yeah. along the contract mm -hmm. talks. Or it could be WWE saying, hey, why don't you come along to Raw and we'll, uh, we'll chat about that whole contract situation. Complete speculation right now, uh, but very interesting and something to keep an eye on in the future. Speaking of things to keep an eye on, by the way. Yeah, a former WWE champion's future remains uncertain. So does a current one. Mm. This is not so great. Um, Asuka, of course, for those that might have uh, seen the end of SmackDown, there was a beatdown planned with Damage Guitar on Bailey and Naomi. Uh, but Asuka was hobbling mm. throughout. You could see she pulled something uh, early into the beatdown, and it appears as of right now that the future remains uncertain for the Empress of Tomorrow. A PW Insider have confirmed that, that what we saw on television was indeed real and that it was something to be concerned about. She was pulled from all of the weekend's live events and any physicality of anything like that so that tests could be determined, uh, tests could be done to determine the nature of the industry. Obviously, there is no worse time of year to get injured yeah. and breathe right now. Um, you know, not least when you're, in Asuka's case, one half of tag team champions, when it very much appears like Damage Katal are either going to be set to have a three-way or a tag match yeah. at WrestleMania. This is one of them things where it's going to get worse before it gets better because that match is very much something that can still go ahead with Asuka being absent from it. So she might be forced to watch from the sidelines, as I suppose Dakota Kai has had to do for the longest time yeah. with Damage Katal. Uh, yeah, it was an uneasy feeling that kind of gripped that beat down at the end of SmackDown and now feels like we're seeing it. There's no... 
confirmation yet exactly on the nature of the injury other than obviously where it was and indeed the time out um, wrestlers of course have been known to tape it up and work through yeah. when it gets to Wrestlemania season I and expect um, them to drop the titles at Mania I expect well, indeed, everyone to drop titles at Mania to yeah, be you honest got, you got a 15 title change over two yep. days haven't you happened over Wrestlemania including but, uh, the NXT world title of course it is indeed it is likely uh, that we will get uh, a proper update on Asuka Possibly as early as this Friday at SmackDown yeah. because one would expect at this point the match graphic to be dropping. So. Yeah, fingers crossed. I, I, it'd be it really suck because I, I not only suck for Asuka because I love her. She's phenomenally talented, obviously, and she uh-huh. uh, would be would be great in a potential tag match with I assume Bianca Belair and Naomi. But like you yeah. say, Jay Cargo could be factored mm-hmm. into like a six woman match. Um, the the caveat is of course. You could just sub Dakota Kai in. Mm-hmm. Dakota and Kyrie could be the tag Freebird team. Freebird rule with the belts. I'm yeah. so happy to see Dakota Kai back wrestling. Yeah. She looked great on SmackDown. Um, but yeah, I don't want that to have to be the case because of injury. Um, and yeah, I, I think the you know the truest way for someone to drop a title is the actual team drops it rather mm-hmm. than just a you know a, a, a someone filling in for someone's spot. But yeah, I, I'm astonished as a football fan. Uh, you know around the sort of big tournaments you always think ah uh, maybe don't play any players getting a booking just before christmas yeah, so they don't, that don't kind get, of thing so yeah. they don't get injured <laughs> uh you know you've got this big tournament coming up wrap them in cotton wool we've talked about it before wrestlers just like to keep going it's arguably mm-hmm. better for them but i'm genuinely astonished anyone wrestles any matches on the weeks leading up to WrestleMania. not games. least when again if you watch this back on smackdown you can see it's a totally innocuous moment for Asuka. very similar to the darby allen uh foot injury yeah. that's cost him his everest dream for at least another year um for all that the talk is on like when you'll see a big bump or a dangerous spot like it's often not that dangerous the wrestler it's the fact that this is an incredibly dangerous job they all do every single night yeah I bet you need to go through the last one with Sunday match I'm feeling really good now feeling good ready for WrestleMania when they'd have like Sunday night heat before the pay-per-view and then somebody would have to work it as part of a stipulation it's like well that could be that then you know yeah fingers crossed for Asuka Uh, although she is unable to work Wrestlemania and she's just you know around that weekend and wants something to do Boom, there you go. Asuka's going to be in attendance. God's object to change. Long list at this point. <laughs> it's always it's always We lost sunny. a bunker on Raw yesterday, didn't yeah. we? So we've gained Asuka. Now. It's, always, <laughs> it's always sunny at What Culture goes down on day two of WrestleMania. It's going down at lunchtime uh, on the 7th of April at Underground Arts Philadelphia. Don't worry if you're going tonight too. We all are as well. So you'll have plenty of time to get over there for that one. VIP tickets sold out months ago. But general admission tickets are still available. WhatCulture.com forward slash tickets we are the meat in their Wrestlemania sandwich but if you want a vegan alternative check out that underground arts menu oh. as well the food and drink there looks a good here yeah don't, don't come for us come for the food it's yeah. great there'll be some like noise going on on the stage but we'll try not to disrupt your dinner and drinks indeed and drinks yeah drinks look awesome as well to be fair maybe that can be your daily I can't get too giddy ahead of night too your daily cheesesteak I'm going to have one a day minimum okay. minimum yeah I'm going to blend it up put it in a drink <laughs> Um, right, let's oh, some more bad news coming out of WWE um, right now regarding Raquel Rodriguez. Oh, yeah. She's had a rough time, of mm-hmm. course, with the mast cell activation syndrome, MCAS. Uh, she's been diagnosed with that. Uh, she went away for a bit. She came back. She uh, Did it flare up again at Elimination Chamber? Yeah, she had she some issues. Through it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but now she has been pulled from the active roster of WWE. This is going to PW Insider, uh, who says that Raquel is currently listed on WWE's internal inactive list. Um, it's not known whether it is related to the MCAS that she suffers from or just a straight up injury. But as you've said, bad time of the year to, to be on the inactive list. Yeah. Um, I love Raquel as well. Get well soon. I wonder if Raquel Rodriguez uh, will be more pragmatic about the WrestleMania end of this and just think. Uh, need to tackle this and beat it. Like, Elimination Chamber was a lovely moment, if nothing else, because in spite of, obviously, it flaring up during the build, and I think it was during the travel, wasn't it, when she got to Australia, like, working the show must have felt like an incredible moment of validation, having had to go out for so long with it. Mm. We've seen she's been very sort of open about it. She's, like... It like shared, I guess, her battles with it on X, and I think that's a valuable you thing to do as well. Like a back, didn't yeah, you? like it reminds you of like the hardship of the recovery and all the things that go along with that. I think it does. Like everybody here at What Culture, and I think probably within the wider wrestling community, like extends their like support and uh, and drive to Raquel as she tries to sort of like work through this. Yeah, it's just uh, a, rough. a word on people who comment on wrestlers' appearances and things like that. Mm. Maybe. You don't know what they're going through, yeah. so maybe just keep it to yourself. I saw people saying, like, why is she wearing makeup or whatever on Elimination Chamber? It's like, is that a priority? Uh, or, yeah, get well soon, Raquel, from all of us here at What Culture. 
Uh, fingers crossed you can get over this. Yeah, lots of uh, injuries and changes and all that sort of stuff, so we'll end on a bit of a high, shall yes. we? A WrestleMania weekend high. Shayna Baszler's blood sport opponent has been confirmed. I can't believe I'm saying those words. Yes. Uh, it's like a long time coming for the likes for Shayna Baszler to work uh, blood sport. There is some interesting stuff on Fight for Select if you want to read about how uh, apparently this has been in the works for years, but WWE often just went, nope, yeah. straight away. Um, Josh Barnett wanted Jessamine Duke way back when you had Duke and Shafia like second in Baszler. And main background, amazing yeah. NXT run. It was a nope then, but apparently Triple H and Josh Barnett have always got on. So this is the kind of thing. And we are told at least through Fight for Select, or at least I've seen some reporting that multiple names, so there could still be more getting added to this. But Baszler's a headline one because of how well she fits in all of this. And it's going to be Masha Slamovich oh! in the spot. Um, Masha Slamovich at this point has kind of like been known as just a kicker, basically, <laughs> for, like, for TNA, GCW, uh, Wrestling Revolver, CZW. She's been all over the place. She was the one to cut up promo to put Shayna in a place on X so we'll be seeing loads more of that sort of stuff between the two of them Bloodsport, for those of you may not be aware, it's now into its 10th year. Is it? Yeah. 10 years, bloody Blood, hell. Bloodsport X this year, an ancillary event for WrestleMania weekend where the ropes come down and it's worked MMA within the confines of a ropeless wrestling ring. Yeah, basically. they kind of took inspiration from Raw Underground is what I'm aware Very of. much Raw yeah. Underground yeah. adjacent, yes, I would say. Um, I'm going to be in attendance, my first ever Bloodsport yeah, this you year. Are. I have mixed sort of feelings about how it works as a genre, but live, I kind of can't wait for the... Yeah, we're the, always too bloody big when yeah. we go out for Mania and all I ever see is tweets and people talking about how awesome it is so yeah if you can go yeah. hop along it's going to be great and like, yeah she's ideal for it as well because I was worried when Shayna had that tag match for the titles before and I was like oh cool guess they're not on the Mania card this is this all is the making up for her it. Mania weekend isn't it you know you've seen clips of like John Moxley getting in the muck for years yes. it's like a, they have like wild like ideas like I think this year it's Josh Barnett versus Johnny TV in that setting like there's all sorts of we just like, have to split well indeed actually I hope he does it's one of the best exits I've ever Seen Slides that. out from Bloodsport. The reality based one. Get me on a, on a pallet. See ya. Hey, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, Shane Baszler and Masha Slamovich, Bloodsport. This isn't even a plug for tickets because they were sold out before the announcement. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> I say go, but go along, but you it's can't. A, it's a hot ass ticket, but uh, I'm sure you'll hear me talking all sorts of nonsense yeah. about this when we all get home. What day is January. it? That's on the Thursday. Mm. I'll be racing from Bloodsport to the Mark Hitchcock Invitational, uh, doing the exact same as Nick Nemeth, who was working both shows. <laughs> Uh, share an Uber with me if you hey, like. Hey, maybe, maybe even. This guy could uh, stretch an Uber exec. So. Well, I've done about that. Like, <laughs> I thought you were going to say stretch you out in a blood spot match. I was like, I'm not getting in there. <laughs> and then maybe Wale Mania afterwards. Love Wale Mania. I can't wait for it this year. Get me in the guest list, Wale, and I'll be there. Yeah. Slash Phil. Somebody sort that out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> should we do some questions? Yes, please. I would ask you the questions today. I, I like this, I, and I don't like it at the same time. Uh, I caught up, uh, a couple of sort of like Wilborn adjacent ones, and I waffle on on these mm. podcasts and stuff all the time. So, like, so you're you, talking wrestling history. You've got to give the people what they want, and what they want is you, especially Brandon at Brando One, who said, "Morning, you absolute legends." Especially Adam Wilborn, fellow Chesterfield icon. We could win the title today, Eastley. Please just draw, just draw, and we win the title. I'm going to be unbearable, even more unbearable, if we win the title. We're going to go back to the promised land, baby. Football league, here we come. Sorry. And that was the question. No, 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 I knew it was worthwhile asking, though, to give you a moment for that, because it is indeed tonight. Uh, his other question is on something else you very much enjoyed. Which yeah, very was quickly, the... if, anyone got, if anyone got any tickets to the final game of the season, hit me up, please. I love this. I love what this news has already become. Ubers and tickets at this point. Just begs. <laughs> begs. Just endless begs. Uh, something you loved nobody else did because you were wrong. The Mania 39 finish. Uh, Brandon's question, he says, my question is a simple one. How do they build Solo Sokoa? Since Mania 39, he's felt like a bit of an afterthought and his gimmick feels like, quote, get involved in matches as he likely will versus, with Jay versus Jimmy. So yeah, Solo, WrestleMania and everything else around that. Yeah, um, look, I, I get it. I think they did a great job, obviously, when he just squashed John Cena. Mm -hmm. uh, and he still has that aura about him. For me, it's not necessarily about Mania, because he's just going to be kind of playing a role in amongst all the bloodline madness there. Yeah. It's afterwards that you really re-establish Solo Sokoa. Because I think, yeah, maybe he interferes in Jimmy and Jay. Maybe, you know, Roman says the, 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 the order comes down from the tribal chief. We need all the bloodline 100% for a... Uh, Sunday night, so Jimmy, you're not that important. Uh, you're going in there on your own. Solo's not going to get involved in that, but he is probably going to get involved in bloodline rules, which mm -hmm. is fingers crossed what happens on Sunday night. But you can counteract him by having Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn and, I don't know, Stone Cold Steve Austin maybe come down <laughs> to uh, even the odds for the baby faces. Um, 
I think afterwards is, is when he really takes over. Mm-hmm. It's where Roman's suddenly looking for someone to blame. I think you kind of hold off on him turning on Dwayne because mm-hmm. uh, he's going away for a bit and you can save that for the build towards WrestleMania 41. So I think Roman's like, oh, so I'm going to do this and so like, I'm not going to do that. Or even you have Paul Heyman go, I'm going to align myself with this guy because yeah, uh, he always pinches his wagon before the other one stops rolling, basically. He does. Heyman's always quite like Solo. He'd be a sure. brilliant challenger for Cody Rhodes' early stages. I don't think he wins the title straight away, but I'm not discounting the fact he's probably going to be a world champion in the future at some point. So I, I think it's looking good for him. Yeah, you just need to do exactly what he did to John Cena to another big star, yeah. and he's exactly back where he was after that match. Preserved his unbeaten record relatively yeah. well as well. I think Jay and Cody the only ones to beat him. Maybe right? Orton, but it was in all the schmoz of... Yeah. of the build not many. To, he's uh, not like yeah. he's not like you don't visualize him losing much, do you? So uh, and that spike's so protected. Though. Oh yeah, yeah. If he hits that, and I think he will over WrestleMania weekend. Oh, Cody's going to kick out. I know that's going to weaken him a little bit, but it's that's more but Super what Cody than it's yeah. Uh, Fraser Cranium. Hey, uh, shout out to Fraser Cranium, friend of the channel. Uh, morning, guys. Something you love talking about. Uh, do you have any recurrent wrestling dreams? Uh, Frazier shares one he's either about to or is already in the ring for a match in front of a huge crowd with no trainer experience. Last time it was against Will Ospreay. Uh, <laughs> do me a favour and have a lovely day. Thanks as always. We will because you got in touch with Frazier. You have a lovely day too. Um, a fantastic follow at Frazier underscore Cranium on X. My recurring dreams uh, are only wrestling adjacent in that sometimes I am in the dream not working here. Something oh, has happened where I have decided to walk away from the greatest place on earth and like work in uh, like an old office job. I like I can even see former colleagues in the dream and I'm just working away and then I have this moment where I'm like, wait a minute, nobody's made a noise for me. Where, <laughs> where's Wellborn? Like, I can't talk about Raw with anyone. Not that Sid wants to talk about it, but we're going to do it yeah. anyway. Like, wh- where's where's all the wrestling crack? And it's, it's, it's gone away. Yeah. And then I wake up and there's a split second where you're like, Oh, gee, uh, oh, 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 God, another day. And I just I slide out of bed. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Talking about the Fed with all my mates. <laughs> Everything, everything's fine again. But yeah, that's my wrestling recurring dream. Yeah, I told you about this yesterday, didn't I? Yeah. I had a nightmare over the weekend. Uh, and it's, everyone probably has a, a version of this relating to their job. I had a nightmare where I was trying to get into the office because I had to record, I think it was a SmackDown preview with you and we had wrestle culture. So it was a Friday. It certainly sounds important. Yes. Yep. And for whatever reason, I just couldn't get into the office. And I was like, no, the people need a hashtag bloody good quiz. <laughs> so I've, I've had that. And in a completely different vein, mm-hmm. my alter ego, Titus Thunderbastard Caligari, who's part of my D&D campaign, he often gets attacked by mind shadows uh, well, yeah, that- who, uh, who showcase him losing to his arch nemesis, Volok. Uh, Dice with Death fans will know this. And uh, yeah, he, he remembers uh, being eliminated from the, the rumble that they have there. Oh. And that's the alarm. Yes, you can hear it. That's the power alarm. So, well, one needs to stop speaking about D&D. Uh, Dice with Death, if you're a fan of that sort of thing. I love that you are as well. Oh, like, I'll forget sometimes. It's really saved me during the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to see you welcome that world back yeah. in. Uh, last question, a very important one. Let's keep it serious to end the news. Okay. Yeah? It's from uh, Stephen Blaney, at Stephen Blaney 985 what would be worse to endure? An hour in the club with the dead man and the boys, or an hour trudging through the sludge of bad take opinions on X? So when he says in the club with the dead man and the boys, that's like drinking jack with oh, a beer. I hate whiskey as well. I, know. I can't like, do it. Imagine doing the. <laughs> what the hell did he just do, Savio? Excuse me, do you do any like pina coladas or anything? What the hell's that in your drink, boy? Why well, you got the jungle in there? Uh, uh, dead man, uh, I've brought a crate of beer for the boys. What the hell is calling? That stuff tastes like piss. Get the bottle service, it makes the models nervous, boy. <laughs> I'd rather, I do it all the time, I trudge through bad takes on X. It's usually my bad takes, to I was be honest. Say, yeah, that's just my own feed. <laughs> yeah, in terms of we talk about wrestlers not getting injured on the road to WrestleMania because they're callous to injuries, I'm callous to bad takes on X. <laughs> so I'll take that one, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, I'll keep X as long as possible. I think the, the answer to the question is secret option C. There's like, uh, sludge through the trudge on X, there's uh, the club with the dead man and the boys, or there's like spending five minutes on threads. <laughs> oh God, is that still a thing? I don't even know. <laughs> threads is really is the rampage of social media, <laughs> isn't it? Oh, That's that... not about the news, what you think on threads. <laughs> is that still going, is it? <laughs> That's not what you think about all this on threads, because we'll never see yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, he tries to trick me sometimes on Instagram, he goes, do you want to see this? I go that, and he goes, let's go on these threads, and I'm like, oh, I'm not doing that. Get away from like, me, it's disgusting. There's some horrible stuff. I'll, t- I'll take, stuff. actually, I'll take option D, go into the club, with Caden Carter and Katana Chance, because they bloody love to party, they do. They do. But enough of bad takes. If you want some good takes, Hamfleet, you know what they can do. What's that? Check out this video right here. See you later. <laughs>